Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today we're going to get to my three cherimoya trees that I grew from seed. They're a little less than two years old, and um, they're actually all acting very differently. So uh, we'll discuss that, and we'll get to pruning them on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. start videoing my wife who uh, now works from home Laura uh, and in the same room I was setting up got a work phone call and the person's asking like six million questions and they're being really annoying but unfortunately I couldn't speak while I was inside because I think that would be unprofessional for her so anyways this is the largest of my three cherimoyas and the cherimoya it produces fruit apparently after three years um, and it's actually, it's a nice big fruit, looks like a mango, and on the inside, it's a white flesh with big black seeds. And Mark Twain, when he was living in Hawaii, um, actually went on record and wrote about that it's the most uh, delicious fruit um, that a man can eat. So I found that interesting, but I only found that little tidbit after um, I was reading a nutritional um, article I believe it was from WebMD or Johns Hopkins or something like that. And it was talking about the most nutrient dense foods. And number two on the list was a cherimoya. And I was like, what the hell is a cherimoya? <laughs> so I looked it up. I ordered these seeds from Portugal from a guy named Pablo on Etsy, I believe. And uh, so he sent me 10 seeds and three of them have grown. So, so this guy was inside and this guy was inside. Okay. And this one just started losing its leaves. But you see, if I could focus, you see there's, there we go. We got all those little healthy nodes swelling. So I think this one's about to leaf out. So I'm gonna put him back inside. I don't wanna mess with that. Uh, I just wanted to take some of the verticality out. It's got a nice little swoosh at the beginning starting and where it starts. And so we'll see if we can get some interesting branching from there. Uh, this one is more just a straight up tree style. And you see it's got a nice trunk and two healthy branches. So we'll see if we can, uh, oh, actually three branches. That's why I left this one coming off the back. See that? So all in the early stages, this one is the one that's scaring me. Okay. It was, it lost its leaves inside like three weeks before the other one. I believe it was an aphid or a spider mite attack that might have caused it. So I treated it 
and um, it wasn't responding inside. So I said, you know what? Let's let's put it outside. Maybe it went into dormancy. I'll let it get some of the days in the high 30s and low 40s. And so I'm going to leave this outside, and I'm really going to hope and pray there are no nodes. And I where I cut does not show any green, but it seems pretty solid, and I don't think that it's dead. So I will give you the update on this one. Okay, so a couple of updates on this one is my Western Red Bud. And man, oh man, I'm loving this thing. Look at it right now, those tiny little heart-shaped leaves. That's the appeal for uh, this tree and specifically as a bonsai. If you want to see uh, seeds started by the Western Red Buds, uh, my buddy Scott Winard at Let's Do Bonsai, he has a really... Really good uh, playlist starting from seed and going through. So he has some younger red buds than mine, uh, but this is my prized one. The Kentucky yellow woods are coming back. My red woods, they have tons of swelling on them. See what had happened is these came out of dormancy inside. And then when I put them outside, they got completely scorched by the natural sun, but they're all alive and healthy. Um, I've checked them. If you remember, I had my river birch landscape with the Thuja occidentalis, and I had let it get dehydrated, and all the leaves were wilting up and dying. So that was in a previous one, and those are looking really healthy. Uh, oh, this one is a crepe myrtle. See, that one's looking good. It's leafing out. When you have young trees, when they first start to leaf out, that's when they look the best because it actually, you know, looks to scale. When they come in, they grow in like this thing, and they've got these huge leaves on a skinny baby tree trunk. You know, it just uh, totally throws it off. But, hey, it's part of the journey. So we got an azalea budding up. Nice little black locust here. And all of these trees, <laughs> it's pretty cool. You won't be able to see it on my camera. They all have some sort of spider living up there. I don't know if it's like a family of the same variety of spider or like one head honcho, but there's tons of webbing and stuff, which I'm, I'm digging because I've had a lot of insect problems and I'm pretty sure they help out. Uh, so I've got, that is a fragrant tea tree olive. It hasn't gotten pruned as a bonsai. I just wanted to get it to be alive because I got it, um, last year and it was bare rooted. So this is really its first life cycle. It's a little hickory. That was a Yamadori. So yeah, exciting stuff, exciting stuff. I got my tomatoes. They should be in the ground already. Well, actually I do mine in food grade buckets. Um, however, I don't have any soil. And so I'm waiting for my buddy who picks it up with his uh, dump trailer to bring it out. So looking like in the next three or four days. So I'm just keeping them hydrated while I wait on that. Here is my lemon lace elderberry. Coming out for the season. I really like the start of this base. I think these two trees are gonna fuse together and that'll be cool. Uh, I'm gonna get to this one soon. So this, uh, these are Thuja Occidentalis, uh, Connecticut Red Pines, and some Colorado Blue Spruce. And I wanted this tight. It's supposed to be like a really dense forest, but it got gnarly when I put it out from inside to outside. Uh, so, I don't know, we might have to get in there and do some chopping. Maybe just do like a canopy, like a straight prune across, get what's dead out of there and let some light get into it to get some new new buds going. Japanese maples coming alive. More of the black locust. Oh, and this is really exciting. So these are my two Yamadori uh, Connecticut white pines, boom and boom i keep them like a japanese garden tree you know they're like four or five feet tall uh and i thought they were completely dead because they lost their needles but they're not i'm not gonna be able to see the nodes on that one but let's see if we, oh yep here we go boom look at that they're not dead that really really made me happy Got some trident maples. Here's a Yamadori hickory that's really starting to get some nice branching. It looked funky in the beginning because it was just that, 
and then like one tiny little leaf up top. So this is its second spring season with me. I think I collected it in the, the previous fall. So we're looking at, I've had it for a year and a half. This, it was underneath my steps and it grew like that because it was ramming into the step <laughs> underneath and it had no more growth or it had no more ability to go up. Got my tropical planting out here. It's really starting to warm up. My Korean birch is budding back after it's pruning. Some sweet birch uh, landscape planting. Very young, but they're all looking healthy. It's my blueberry and a little volunteer maple that I'm letting grow. It looks like my sole hickory tree, or excuse me, hemlock tree has survived. It was looking like very straggly and it still is but i'm seeing some nice new buds so yeah all right y'all so that's going to do it for us today here at the ranch i hope you enjoyed yourself the cherimoya is really rare i had never heard of it before um but the leaves are cool the plants are healthy and it's got a really cool backstory so i hope you enjoyed your time and i'll see you next time take care y'all